captain here and we're going Japanese today because we've got Alex Hutchins, who's not Japanese, Hello. but with the wonderful new Boss GT001 uh, effects unit, which is Japanese. Um, so, Alex Son, thank you very much for coming down. Yeah, tell, us, tell us what we've got here. All right, well, I guess this is the uh, very interactive desktop um, awesomeness. Um, so it's kind of like having the GT100, but in a nice compact yeah. Um, unit and the great thing is it interfaces beautifully with uh, there's a new website called Boss Tone Central. Yeah. Uh, what that means is you can actually there's editors available that you can you know manipulate your tone so you don't necessarily have to get into the screens on here. Uh, nice easy format there as you move things around you can see it's very intuitive yeah. and lovely like that. Um, and so you can exchange patches with people and, and obviously it's a great recording interface. Um, uh, it's even got a guitar to MIDI monophonic That's insane, isn't it? thing thrown in. Uh, you've got an XLR, so you can sing through it as well. There's uh, vocal uh, patches in there as well and vocal effects. So, yeah, it's pretty cool, like, all in one. me a little bit how given how uh, prevalent you know home recording is now and how many people just want to plug into their um, PC or Mac and, and just you know jam some stuff around mm. the, 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 the effects market you know the sort of the you know boss Digitech zoom um, even line six to an extent have kind of moved away from the desktop device mm. and really just you know all the new stuff seems to be coming out as either a floor unit or I suppose perhaps some of the top end stuff the big rack sort of stuff that's coming out mm. but I rather um, miss, you know, I, I, I used to quite like the, the sort of the desktop format. It's a very neat way mm. of, of connecting something to your PC. So I'm, re I'm really pleased to see um, Boss is coming back at this. And one of the things I really liked about this as well was that it's bus powered as well. Yeah. So if you guys don't know what that means, it just means that the, the power that we're receiving to the, um, to the GTW1 is actually coming from the USB cable on the, on the Mac. Um, so predominantly this is a you, you, this is going to be appealed to, to guitar players that just want a whole palette of different tones mm. um, at their fingertips. So let's go through, you know, g give me an idea of the sort of you know types of sounds that, that this kind of thing can produce. Yeah, well, perhaps what I might do is just start with um, a kind of a bank of 10 tones that I created. I was yeah. asked to create some. Now, what I went for with this was to create something quite uniquely different about each one to hopefully inspire people to, to write a riff or something of their own. So yeah. some of them aren't necessarily conventional initially, but we can get to some of the presets later. Yeah. So these are some of the ones I, uh, I made. This first one uh, is called Talk To Me. It's kind of like a, uh, almost like a bass wah thing, which is quite cool just to do something a bit different. Yeah. So, um... <laughs> And a channel, that's channel A, yeah, yeah. channel B, this is a bit more. <laughs> So what I've got on each of my patches is channel A and B being a, a different yeah. sound. So yeah. if you imagine like the signal path running in parallel, you can choose either A or B, yeah. or you can have the two of them simultaneously. Okay. So that's a cool, uh, cool factor. Uh, the next one is just a little bit more standard, nice kind of clean. Romantic open. octaves. Yes. That's um, beautiful. So Serenaded kind of, here. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and then another lead channel to complement it. Yeah. So let's just uh, see what we can come up with uh, here. Uh, right. <laughs> Thank you. 
Mm. Should we just clear up right from the start? Why why can no one understand the chords you're playing? Oh yes. Well, I'm I'm tuning in fourths, which is a little bit uh, different to normal. My top two strings, all these four are exactly the same: yeah. E, A, D, G, uh, C, and F. Which yes. is cool. So I'm playing my special chords that Go you, and you can't do. Follow Alex <laughs> on uh, on his own YouTube channel stuff because he does all that kind of stuff. And there's, you do quite a lot of like jam track central yep, situation. Exactly. So go and do that because it's a it's we won't go into it now. But Alex was explaining it to me earlier, and it's a cool kind of uh, alternative to standard. Tuning. Yeah, it's cool. cool. Um, but anyway, that's yes. why. So don't copy all the chords he's playing because sound you're terrible. Will sound terrible. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to this. Yeah. So uh, nice clean tone that you can write some some beautiful songs with. And then a complementing uh, lead tone uh, on on channel B, and I'm just changing it right here on, yeah. the, on the on the top. You know, it's not too gainy, which I like. And as I dig in, you feel a bit more crunched. Nice. There. What you guys are hearing, by the way, is you are hearing the GT001 straight into our interface here. So uh, we're hearing it in the room just through a little powered uh, wedge on the floor, um, but we're not using any of the backline in here. Um, could you uh, could you plug it into backline if you wanted to? I mean, what, yeah, I guess you, you sort could. Of disable a, the speaker emulation or exactly. something. Exactly. Yes. It, you know, it's it's certainly versatile in that respect. So if you wanted to just use it as an effects, yeah. Play, Processor, you could, yeah, absolutely. I'm just kind of thinking. I, I guess if you that's really where the GT100 is more aimed at the guy that's going to go and plug it into an amplifier and gig yeah, it, yeah. I guess but so. But if, if it was just a question of well, I have an amp, so why don't I just plug it in and get some effects on it and stuff? You don't have to have it running into a, a computer or a PA or anything like no, that. No, but actually, a good point is if you're recording with it, uh, of course, you can uh, do like a dry record and capture ah. um, just that signal and therefore. Um, Reamp it should you want to later on. So, yeah. so that that's another way of doing it. You know, and you can be inspired happens, that if you're way. using the USB output to record. That just happens automatically, does it? It just stores a dry track and a wet track. Uh, or well, you you just need to select the fact that you want to do it that right. way. You, you can route it in whatever way you like. So, if you just want to record it yeah. with the patch, that's straightforward. Or you can reamp it as well. Cool. Within the machine or through an amp. Um, <laughs> things as a clean kind of delay-ish yeah. it's not really my style but as you can see but there's a delayed kind of on the edge sound here's a cool one this is uh, again one of mine and these are all downloadable as well so yeah. you can use these a nasty synth bass um, I love this it's, it's I love a cool this. explain that as I turn the volume up and down it changes the way that it responds I don't really know how or why I just figured it out whilst I made it <laughs> me playing softer yeah. and the, the filter <laughs> find that if you hammer on and stuff it it gets this, this nice kind of filter where Pick, yeah. it opens it back up again so that's that's a great fun that one um, this one is lovely uh, this is utilizing uh, not just a kind of a crybaby copy yeah. wire but there are about five or six different types maybe even seven different wires and I like this one it's a very kind of like throaty yeah. wire so this is a nice uh, nice work. What you guys can't see on the floor is Alex has just. Uh, in fact, let me. Can I pick it up? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this just. A, this is. In fact, this looks like it's been through the wars a bit. So this is just a standard Roland EV5 expression pedal. Um, 
you can do, presumably, the idea with this is that any parameter within the G200 can yeah. be assigned to this so that you make it go up and down. But we're just, so Alex is just using that as a wah yes. at the moment, or to control the wah effect. Exactly, yeah, and it feels really cool. I love this one. <laughs> I you know, just feel like Steve Vai whenever I do that. It's really, very cool. Really isn't it? cool. Um, so and the other thing to mention quickly is that you can use that same port either with the expression pedal or you can change patches uh, or channel switch with a with an FS6, which is the... Oh, okay, cool. So you yeah. don't have to go for a MIDI floorboard. Just no, to, no, no, no. Sort of just the FS6 is the, the yeah. stereo box. The two-button one, yeah. 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 So, I mean, um, you know, and, and th this is just kind of an overview of some of the patches I made. Do the... Do the um, I always kind of think with... with uh, there's a tendency in these kind of demos, same in the shop as well, to sort of go, here's some of the crazy stuff that it can do, you know, and, yeah. it, and it's like, oh, wow, that's kind of cool and everything. But then when you get it home, you just think, I just want to play to my Eric DC or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So what, just let's grab just a couple of yeah, strip sure. right back to just a, you know a nice amp sound that's yeah you know, just okay yeah because it, it's all in there isn't it? I think Absolutely. some people sort of think it's that you know some people find it almost tiresome to sort of wade through these extreme patches until they oh, just absolutely. found the sort of basic stuff. So it's quite easy to do though on this, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. Well, those, just to clarify, yeah, those first few um, were some of the ones that I made to kind of be different. Yeah. But then what I also did uh, was to go through and pick my some of my favorite presets and just put them in a row. So yeah. perhaps I'll just quickly run through, yeah, give you a couple of seconds of each one just to, yeah. to hear some of the, the differences. Um, and uh, I may just quickly tune and show yes. you that Ooh, there's a lovely tuner on there. That is nice. Um, and you can see now my crazy tuning with the C and the F on top. Um, there we go, it's the D all along. Cheeky. All right. Okay, so yeah, I'll just give you a few seconds on, on some of these patches, um, yeah. you know, the ones that I like. So, um, ah, the volume pedal. <laughs> That's a really nice stereo effect. So if you're if you're using a monitor or a nice pair yeah. of headphones, yeah. it really feels like you're in the room, um, right. which is a, a, a nice effect. Uh, again, kind of a, a bluesier crunch. <laughs> Reboot. So Fendery Blues kind yeah. of vibe. Yeah. Um, we'll go past that one. So here we go, acoustic sim. This is quite nice actually. Um, that's a big improvement on the Boss Compact acoustic simulator uh, because I, I kind of got a bit switched, you know, I. I went down the route for the clever acoustic stuff of just looking at like you know the, the line six type variax thing where you you know rather than you try and you know rather than using a compact pedal yeah but that's a that's pretty it's nice of, isn't that's it that's probably one of the best you know acoustic simulators I've ever heard bearing in yeah. mind it's an it's an effect yeah. rather than a some sort of crazy you know digital modeling thing yeah I know I, actually I, myself I'm, I'm really mm. glad I, I found that because I was like it's a great sound I was really surprised mm. myself so I'm pleased with that one. So I've, Alex has a, an eight string guitar here and um, you may have seen if you're a subscriber to the to Rob Chapman's channel that Rob and I did a sort of a seven versus eight versus nine string video the other day and kind of came to the conclusion that guitar amps like this um, aren't terribly well suited to sort of set eight and nine string. Handle the seven fine. Uh, and I think a lot of the reasons why you see uh, some of the bands that are playing eight strings now using um, guitar effects devices like you know Axe FX or Pod or GT100 or whatever is because of the tightness that it can afford on some of the what are essentially the bass strings. Yes. So I thought Alex has got an eight string. We've got a kind of a, a tight driven sound on here called Power Drive. So let's hear some eight string riffage, uh, and then you'll see what I mean about how it works 
much better through a device like this than it would do through a you know a combo. Yeah, so I might go from here to there and then do it. <laughs> see what happens. run you through yeah. uh, this is using some of the new uh, the overtone um, sounds almost sort of organ-esque you know <laughs> You know, this, this patch, uh, I'm sure you can probably see on, on the close-up camera, or if you can't, it's called Fat Bluesy Lead. This is a good opportunity now to try and just show how the, the sort of latest generation Cosm mm. amp modeling reacts to yeah. the volume and soft picking. And yes. Because it and then back to the soft. So it's, that's what you you kind of it, it's trying to replicate that sort of valve amp just cleaning up, isn't it? As yeah. you sort of pick soft or back the volume down. That's yeah, very yeah, cool. that's cool. Uh, again, a couple of other presets that now, in fact, just out of interest, I made these patches. Uh, you know, um, I've made these originally for the GT100, which is interesting because they've personally I made right. them. You yeah, know, yeah, before yeah. it came yeah. out, so they've kind of snuck into this right, one, right. which is uh, it was nice to see. But this is a great one. I made this on a Telecaster, and it just kind of gives you a nice yeah. kind of. Uh... <laughs> Channel B gives you just that little bit more edge as well. So I really like that patch. That's cool. Single core rock. So these are all presets that are inside. Yeah. Um, now this, this is this is the first time I've seen a GT001, mm. um, and I guess I'm fairly familiar with. Um, how most multi-effects units work. But just so you guys know, if, if you look on the, the, the sort of close-up camera that we've got mm. here, when you see, obviously the, the down, on a, prior to, to sort of multi-effects units having this um, connectability to computers, you used to have to try and do all the editing on, on these screens. And what happened was that over a while, the screens got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, That's didn't right. they? To make, and then all, all of a sudden it was kind of like, well, there's, there's no room left for any knobs or buttons on it now. So, so the great thing now is the screens on these have gone and shot right back down but you get these beautiful editors, um, you know, to use with them. So you were sort of saying, it, let, let's let's give let's yeah. really really quickly. So, so yeah, where, sure. whereabouts is my um, guitar amplifier that I'm sort of that this particular patch is is modelling at the moment on here? Okay, right, yeah. So if you wanted to go into any single patch, the yeah. nice thing is it's fully integrated. So as you change patch here it will tell you, it gives you the information yep. that's inside. So for example, your amps are here. If you wanted oh, to see. change 
to extreme lead or so that word uh, that, that that is suggesting a type of amplifier cool. exactly yeah uh, and the great thing you know it's just really quite super friendly you know you as you move the gain switch you can either just do it via the knob or you've yeah. got your parameters yeah. there on can the side can you do it using one of these or uh, I'm not sure actually let's give it a go ah yeah well just see <laughs> Absolutely. So Great. I'm pleased that was, that well, was the answer. I, I saw along the bottom of the screen here, it says channel A, B, gain, uh, A gain, B yeah. gain, and whatever, patch, patch LD. level. Oh, yes. patch level. Yeah. So these four knobs underneath are essentially like a quick access kind of version. To, so that's I, right. I kind of took a guess that actually the one that's a yes. gain would probably be gain. Exactly. Um, but it's great to see that it interacts uh, yeah. instantaneously to that. Because of course I knew it did it on the unit. And actually, so you can kind of, here. so you've got loads, you can either do it but very detailed down this side yeah. or you can just do it with the knob over here yes um, so you would choose your amp like that yes and Up then here you is all your different effects pedals so, That's you, right. so looking at this you could have what like a dozen different effects on simultaneously yes. if you wanted to probably yeah and then like I say I've just clicked the compressor here and you can simply go on and off I see. Uh, put your sustain attack and you just literally run through it and, and, and it's like having your massive pedal board in front of you that you can so that there is to I see, and then you, so I just so I haven't actually switched the overdrive on yet, but yep. by making it blue, I'm kind of the, the bottom bit is editing it. Yes, and then just like I would, oh, I'm not really good with Max, I'm afraid. There so you that's go. so it's now on. Yeah, that's very cool. Because that that back in the yeah, you know back on. back in you know when I was a lot on the shop for a, a, a lot, it became. You had this. You had this natural evolution of multi effects pedals that just became so unbelievably sophisticated mm. that the manuals were like this thick. I know. Yes. And and you had to try and explain to a customer, right? Well, well, we're going to try and you know everything that you've got to try and edit now is in a little window this big, and every button has got like sixty three different functions. Mm. So actually. And I think that's one of the reasons why people stopped editing patches because it was just like it's too complicated. Yeah. Kind of, so it's brilliant now that you've got these kind of um, visually very easy to uh, interpret displays on on your on your laptop. Yeah. Because um, it kind of doesn't seem like you know I, I said obviously I've got Alex here and he's going to give me a few pointers but I would borderline kind of go I don't really feel like I need to see the manual to sort of get probably 75% of what I can do Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Yeah, it's very intuitive. I mean, I think that's the yeah. moving forward. I think we'll see a lot more from Boss. Uh, basically everything, pretty much mm. having an ed editor, which mm. just makes it super easy and people can get oh, back cool. to, to, to making their signs. Because you know. as, as every man out there knows, you know, the minute you have to read the manual, you've essentially failed in life. Exactly. So um, <laughs> we don't we don't want to read the manual for too many things. So then uh, moving on, you've got that that capability to make your patch, and then the great thing is it's automatically reading it into mm. your device, and you just you can store I, it. I saw that it. as you change stuff, you yes. get a little message on here saying that it's uh, saving the, the data. So certainly, um, you don't have to have your computer with you when you want to plug this in. Do you? you can just take this away, and it's that's it, right. It just remembers what you've stored last. Yes. A couple of few other things on yep. here. Obviously, the favorite patches great idea I, I saw you very quickly kind of whizzing over and changing patch halfway through a song yeah that ABCD thing's gonna make that incredibly easy exactly to do yeah um, I did want to ask why, why has it got a sort of a tempo indicate is there a metronome or something built in is that um, well actually uh, it's to do with the effects some people like to to uh, kind of um, map it to a BPM oh, okay so that's a global setting so if you wanted to um, have your effects, you know, synced to a tempo that you're working on in your software. You can just say 120, okay. and you can select triplets, and it will instantly find that. Brilliant. And if you're working on a tempo that's 111, that's you change it, and then it'll sync. That's to your quite sophisticated for yeah. a, for a, a device like this, isn't it? It's cool. Um, yeah. We're obviously, I'm guessing, the little headphone icon is just saying that we're in some sort of mode that's adding the speaker emulation that's right it? yeah so exactly. if you were in regular kind of guitar amp mode if you like it would allow the actual speaker in the in the amp to do that mm. speaker bit if you like but of course because we're going straight into a um, interface we're emulating that um there's not a lot else to be honest you on here there is, is there? A one Ooh, one, there one sneaky thing. thing up our sleeve yes. uh the great thing is uh we've introduced uh the guitar to midi via jack 
So what that means... Oh, so you're talking about you don't have to have a guitar with a... No, that's with right. The, the, the sort of GK pickup on it. Just So you could do it from that guitar. Exactly. So what I'm going to do, cool. it might uh, take a second, but through the magic of television, we might be able to <laughs> make this work. Uh, right, okay. So, for example, I can just uh, make some sounds uh, into Logic here. Now, uh, let me just make sure I do this right. I'm going to turn the patch off here. I'm controlling logic. Okay, let's Will do... Will we be... Are we recording this then? So is that sound still coming out of here into the... That's right, yeah. So we can... So, okay, cool. So I'm playing these now bass I just So if you do a run that starts from your top string down to your bottom oh. string, is, is there a noticeable... Do, are you still getting that slight latency where it gets progressively worse the thicker the string gets? Well, I mean, any any kind of uh, MIDI controlling uh, device, you know, you have to respect what you're yeah. doing because yeah. there's a million messages, particularly with this, this instrument, the guitar. Yeah. Um, yeah. Harmonics and stuff play a part yeah. of that. So you have to be quite clean, but I'll, I'll try it. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously in the room and I can hear that the... the, the uh, the time difference between when Alex is hitting the string and when it's coming out, and it's imperceptible until mm. he gets down to about the yeah. A string. Exactly. And yeah. And A in the E string, you can start sort of going, but it's it's massively faster than this technology was what three oh. or four years ago. Oh, amazingly, and this is through a jack cable, and that's yes. the other thing. Now, a little here's just a little tip if any of you actually like to do this. This is something I do, and it's simply to put the instrument down an octave. Yeah. So even if you're playing bass lines, if yeah. you play an octave higher, yeah. it's going to trigger better. So you can see I'm up here, and I'm, yeah. I'm basically playing down yes. there, but yeah. up here. And it's going to make it track a lot better. It's one of my trade secrets, you see. Secret as well. If you're going to end up recording that or even trying to play live with something like that, the mm. other thing I always think, if you, if you use a blend, of the actual guitar tone, yeah. a very small blend of the actual guitar tone alongside the synth tone. Yeah, it just removes that latency issue because even though the synth bit might be a split second behind, yeah, because the guitar bit's instantaneous, you don't, it just doesn't feel. It like helps you've the got that. Um, but Alex was saying as well. Well, tell him the scoring uh, sort of story because that's kind of where you would absolutely use yeah. this as a guitar player, wouldn't you? Um, just before I do, I have to show you this though, yeah. if you don't mind. No, sure. So, I'm gonna, I've got another one here, because it's so fun, you know. Um, right there. Okay. Now, when you hear the thing in the room, it doesn't sound so good, but when you just hear it, it's, it's great fun. Um, anyway, so that's, that's me kind of messing around. But, uh, like you say, um, recently I had a really great uh, use for it, and that was, uh, I had a gig in, in um, uh, Russia which uh, it was this great club like Ronnie Scott's over there a really big deal and um, the musicians were asking for the charts and the scores mm -hmm. and I was actually you know quite busy I was away in Frankfurt at the time actually uh, premiering this and so I had it with me mm -hmm. and I had a load of hours in my hotel room before I had the flight and so what I did I used this feature to score um, some parts for example if I go Apple 3 you can That's see crazy. It, it just gives you the score of, of what you play and then I, I you know transposed it to the saxophone and then printed it out and uh, sent it to them and when I arrived in Moscow they all played the music what, what, in, in all seriousness 10 years ago how long and costly would it take you as a guitar player to tra transcribe a saxophone part yeah, well, it would just be impossible, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, as someone, you know, I've, I've learned to read music as I was growing up, but still, to, to physically write it mm. uh, and possibly make a mistake is, is yeah. the, the, the thing. And then you write, you know, you squiggle over it, and it's like, oh, oh, you know what, I'll write it again by the time you do it. Whereas digitally, in this manner, it's uh, it's very clean. Oh, it's and just insane, isn't it? It's just so, insane. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, essentially, there's a big part of uh, what this can do, and, um, you know. Well,. Yeah. I kind of feel that we've sort of um, talked a lot, or talked enough really about this now. Um, it goes without saying that, that there are hundreds of patches and effects within here, as well as 
an infinite number of patches that you could download from the the boss community uh, mm -hmm. website uh, so i'm sure over the next few months there'll be loads and loads of other videos about this with you know tons and tons of other sounds we didn't really touch a great deal on the fact that it has a microphone input so if you're a guitar player singer type thing and you just want a single device that you can use to record both your guitar and your vocals into your um, desktop you can uh, takes bass presumably yeah. just as happy as and, and has bass sort of relevant patches within there what's this little mini jack on the side here aux in yeah so you iPods could and jam iPhones. along to your iPads yeah. brilliant um, weighs next to nothing so again very much kind of like a gig bag pocket device money how much for uh, this wondrous device here? Um, Boss have actually kind of pitched in this at, at the sort of the, the kind of crazy value end, really. So this is about two hundred and thirty pounds, uh, which is about a hundred pounds less than than GT one hundred, which mm. is great. Um, you were saying actually that uh, just as a quick tip to any GT one hundred owners out there, yeah. if you haven't done the version two update to it, which is a free. Uh, update from the boss website um, you should go do that because some of the features we've talked about on here like there's the pitch to MIDI new, thing yeah there's pitch to MIDI and two new amp models the orange rocker verb and the Bogner amp you cool. get those inside as so well so go and go and download that if you're a GT100 owner if you're so if you're a GT you know if, if the idea of just having a desktop device either for recording or jamming or whatever you just think this will be fun to own these are two hundred and thirty-nine pounds with power supply. With power supply, which is um, quite cool. Always check the Andertons website for latest price because if you're watching this a year down the line, could have gone up, might have gone down. You never know. But I'll put a link in the in the description below. But right now today, yeah, two thirty-nine, which is just it's crazy, isn't it? For great value. Yeah. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Alex, as always, it's been a pleasure to have him down and see him Thank play you. some crazy guitar. <laughs> um, we're going to go and do another video now on the Boss uh, GP10, which is uber cool. I'm very excited about that. But for now, whatever goodbye is in Japanese. Um, sayonara. Sa sayonara. Yeah. Sayonara, everybody. See you later.